Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Bible Study for the Sealang Church of Christ. If you have been to our building, you know where we are. If you have never been to our building because you are joining us from someplace else in the world or someplace else in the Philippines, we are located in Bayan, or city proper, of Silang, Cavite, Philippines, which is about 30 miles or 50 kilometers south of Ninoy Aquino International Airport. As always, we'll start with prayer requests. Mary, what you got for us this morning? Mary, don't say close your eyes. <laughs> Everybody close your eyes. Uh, sir, my, my prayer request uh, wisdom and protection. Okay. Ms. Giselle, good morning. Uh, hello, sir. Good morning, sir. My prayer request is for enlightenment for for all my in-laws, especially my mother-in-law, um, and um, 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 thanksgiving to all the blessings, wisdom and knowledge, and uh, protection to everybody and to my family, of course. Thank okay. you, sir. Ms. Gladys, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, uh, it's praising God, sir, because my children got higher grade in their school and their exam. And uh, yes, oh, sir. Good job. Yes, sir. And uh, still, sir, praying for my auntie and uh, continue healing for my auntie and a protection, sir, for my family and to all of us. Okay. So. Jesse, good morning. Good morning, sir. My prayer request is uh, knowledge and understanding, uh, good health for my mother and long life, and uh, and uh to know and to become closer to god okay. that's all sir thank you miss vanessa good morning yes sir thankful for everyday blessings and of course for the protection and guidance for my family especially for my mother and my sister okay adeline good morning Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Um, my prayer request is continuous healing for Zaldi and Mildred. And of course, thanksgiving for all the blessings that we receive. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Beautiful. How are you today? Doing good, sweetheart. I'm sleepy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, Continuous healing for Ernest. Hopefully, he's going to get rid of that cold. Um, Claudio, Rosella. Um, who else? Michael, for his knee. Uh, his, I think his, yeah, I think his knee, knee problem. And praise for... Uh, what's his name? Ramon Rios, dad. He's now uh, recuperating um, here in Silang right now. He Rio moved move him to Silang from Valenzuela, Bulacan, or Valenzuela, Metro Manila now. And I wish we're going to have a chance to have all the girls in the events, God willing. Larissa, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. I uh, still praising God for every blessing that we have received and uh, good health for everyone. Ms. Wilma, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. Prayers your, for my sister. Okay. Yeah, your sister in law had a uh, chemo last week, right? 
Yes, sir. Uh, no, okay. she's uh, doing good. Okay, we're glad to hear that. That's a praise. Yeah, and prayers for Roxanne that she may overcome all her struggles and trials. And good health for the mother-in-law, Savannah and Roxanne. Okay. Marvin, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my prayer request still for my teacher, Abby. Continuous healing for her. Okay. Give us a prayer, brother. Hold on, sir. Okay. Let us pray. Let us bow our head in the, pres uh, in the presence of the Father. Uh, dear Father, we come before you worshiping your name. Father, uh, we thank you because you provide us the opportunity for us to be able to study your word. Um, Father, we thank you for the blessings that you always given us. Um, may, you pl uh, may you please continue to prosper our family, friends, and friends, and as well as this congregation. Uh, Father, this morning we have some petitions to you. Um, we pray for Sister Mary. May you provide her wisdom and protection. For Sister Giselle, may you give the in uh, her in-laws the enlightenment. May they see the good side of her. And we pray for the healing for the aunt of Gladius, and we praise you, God, for the good, uh, for the good result or good educational attainment of her child. We also pray for Jesse. May you provide knowledge and understanding for him to be to be closer to you, God, um, and as well and good health for her mom as well. As for Sister Vanessa, we pray for the protection of her fa family, especially her mother and sister. As for Sister Anna, we pray for um, Zaldi and Mildred uh, continuous healing. As for Mem Cora, we pray for continuous healing of Sir Ernest, Claudio, Rosella, and Michael. And we praise you for Ramon's situation now <laughs> because it's better. Uh, we also pray for Larissa. Uh, may you provide her good health and peace. We also pray for Sister Wilma. Uh, continuous healing for her sister-in-law and we also praise you for her sister-in-law today is doing good we also pray for sister roxanne may uh, uh, may she overcome her training in i -Corps, and we pray for her mother and daughter's protection uh, father we also pray for sister abby may you provide her continuous healing and peace as well father we know uh, that Everything will be uh, in your name is possible, and we put all our trust in you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of First Timothy. First Timothy. Just a moment. I've got a technical thing going on here. Okay. All right. So we've been studying our way through the books of the Bible uh, as we do an overview of the New Testament. Mary, what do you know about the book of Matthew? Matthew or Timothy? We'll get to Timothy in a minute. This is review day. Oh. Let's find out what you learned. Matthew, sir, is um, go ahead. Whoever's whoever's talking. Uh, let let uh, wait, sir. I think Matthew reminding us about the about the return of Jesus, sir. He is. 
It's one of the what it, it's one of what are known as the synoptic gospels. The synoptic gospels are Matthew, and Mark, all, and Luke. And also uh, about the idleness of the of the believers, sir. Okay. Mark, Giselle. <laughs> You're muted, Giselle. Giselle, you are muted. Unmute, please. Um, sir, as I remember, um, Mark is uh, the beginning of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Okay. Anybody else got anything on Mark? Uh, he's the first one to write the Jesus life events. He's, he's also known as John Mark, and this book very well may have been written by through the direction of Paul. John Mark was a constant companion of Paul. Matthew, Mark, Luke, <coughs> Gladys. Luke, sir, is the birth of baptism. Yeah. Okay. What do you know about <clears throat> Luke? Uh, Luke, sir, is uh, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ. And this, sir, is the, he is the, one last. Luke was a physician. He was a doctor. He was a companion of Peter, He's but he doctor. was not one of the original apostles. John, Jesse. Physician. No, yes, that's a, John is the one who wrote the Revelation, sir. He did write Revelations, but we haven't gotten there yet. We're asking about the book of John. Go ahead. Uh, uh, it's I think it's all about the prophecy. The part. Yeah. No, the gospel of John is not about prophecy. <laughs> The Gospel uh, of John Luke is, is tell, telling of the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. Okay. okay. Uh, Acts. Yeah. Vanessa? Uh, Acts. Uh, sir, it's about the history of the church. Very good. It's how the church came to be, right? Starting on Pentecost and running about 50 years. Yeah, Acts. the history. Who wrote it? Acts, who wrote Acts? Um, I don't remember, sir. Luke. Yeah. Luke. <laughs> Thank you, Mamwara. <Mamuara. laughs> Acts, Romans, Adeline. Romans. Hmm. Mm, all I know, sir, is Romans 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Okay, very good. It was written to the church located in Rome. Oh. At the time it was written, Paul had not yet been there, mm -hmm. but he wanted to go there. Okay, Cora? Yes. First Corinthians. Uh, he wrote the book for the Corinth. He um, Paul wrote the book for the church in Corinth. Corinth, um, the seat Corinth is a city that's wealthy. It is Corinth is a city, yes. But they're having a problem because they struggle with their faith, I guess. Or yeah, they 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 have they're struggling with their faith. Being a big city, I guess it's always a problem. You know? Look at California and New York; they're big city. So they easy now. Fred's from <laughs> Fred's from New York. Yeah, and no, he's not from New York, New York. He's from Buffalo, New York. No, he's from Long Island. Oh, I Long Island. No, I'm from I'm from Manhattan. I was okay. born and raised in Manhattan. I don't think Five you can get more New York than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's you know, there being um Church of Korean or is always a big city, a wealthy trading center. Yeah, see, it's like New York. Wealthy trading center. Okay. 
actually it was a very immoral place and to Corinthianize meant to corrupt a young person. Oh. Uh, that, that was actually a verb in, in use at the time. Uh, however, there were some problems in the church, which is what First Corinthians was written to address because people had become I kind guess. of lax in their following of the commands of God. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians, Larissa. Second Corinthians, uh, uh, Paul wrote it for the Corinthians. Uh, it's a second book of Corinthians. Yes. And yes, uh, it's a uh, the most, what do you call this? Sincere letter of Paul to the Corinthians. That's what I... <laughs> I well, guess, right? he complimented them in 2 Corinthians because they had made the corrections that he had addressed in 1 Corinthians. Galatians, Wilma. Um, You're muted, Wilma. Okay. Galatians reminds Jesus uh, followers to embrace the gospel message of the crucified Messiah. Okay. Galatians was also not written to a church in a specific city. It was written to the churches in Galatia. Judaizer. The false teacher is Judaizer. Galatians. Ephesians. Marvin? False teacher. Ephesians was written by Paul. It was, mm -hmm. and it uh, it was stated here that we, uh, the humanity under the new covenant will be saved under the grace of God through faith. Okay, very good. Ephesians, good. Ephesians, Ephesians. Philippians, Colossians, Philippians, Ephesians, Philippians, Philippians, Philippi. Roland, do you know anything about Philippians? Philippians. So it's all about gospel, gospel of Jesus Christ. It is. Fred, you want to tell us about Philippians? Well, I it's it contains one of one of my uh, favorite scriptures where it gives guidance to the to the believer as to what to focus on. You know, in Philippians 4, you know, it says focus on whatever whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is honorable. You know, put uh, put your focus on, on these because I always understand what you focus on, that's what typically will uh, increase in your life. And so uh, I, I enjoy that. It's actually written to the church located in Philippi. Uh, Philippi was named after Philip, the father of Alexander the Great. Philippians, Colossians, Mary. Mary, phone a friend. Wilma, she's phoning a friend. Uh, Sir, uh, Colossians is uh, the twelfth book of the of the New Testament, and uh, it is it was written by Paul and Timothy. It was written by Paul. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Where's the church located? 100 miles from Ephesus. Colossae. Okay. Okay. All right. Colossians. First Thessalonians. Giselle. Speaking for. 
Is that all you need uh, to sir, uh, sir, it's all about the Church of Thessalonian. The Thessalonica, yes. Thessalonica. Yes. That's all I remember, sir. Okay. Uh, first and so I'll go ahead and give you guys both of these. First and second Thessalonians were primarily written to address second, misunderstandings second related coming. to the return of Jesus Christ. Second coming of Jesus. Okay. Uh, they actually, some of them had begun teaching that Jesus Christ had already returned and those who were saved mm -hmm. were gone. And kind of, on the other hand, they were also teaching that he had not yet returned and those who had died had missed him. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where the, if you read first and second mm -hmm. Thessalonians, you will find all of that to be true. The reason I did that is because we are moving into a uh, second, a, we went through the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then we went through the epistles or the letters primarily of Pauline origin, uh, which would be Romans through Thessalonians. And now we're moving into what have some people have called. <laughs> Sorry, the pastoral epistles. They're written to young preachers of whom uh, Paul had a working relationship. So open your Bibles to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy. What we're going to find in 1 Timothy is uh, Timothy, uh, his name actually has the meaning of honoring God. And he was a young man. We can see that in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And we'll give that one to Mary. 1 Timothy 4, 12, Mary. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and in conduct, in love and faith, in purity. Okay, so what we see here is that Timothy is a young man. Paul says, don't let people look down on you because you are young. Mm -hmm. However, even though he was young, he was one of the most faithful co-laborers with Paul. <laughs> One of the other things we'll notice is that he had a Greek father, but a Jewish mother. And a Jewish mother. Yeah. Do you know his mother's name, Cora? Uh, his mother's name was Eunice, and his ooh, grandmother yeah. was named Lois. And Eunice. they had taught Timothy the scriptures of the Old Testament from the time he was a child. Go to Acts chapter 16 and verse 1. Acts chapter 16, verse 1. Just What's his father's me. name again? Excuse me. Doesn't tell us. You just said his father's name is. No, I said his mother and his grandmother. His mother's name was Eunice it's and his Eunice. grandmother's name was Lois. Oh, Lois. Grandmother. Acts chapter 16, verse 1, Giselle. 16, 1. And Acts cha chapter 16, verse 1. Paul came also to the to Derby and to Lystra, a discipline where there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. Okay. We didn't, so we, we didn't get told his father's name there, right? Mm -hmm. Second Timothy chapter one, verse five. Second Timothy chapter one, verse five, Gladys. Second Timothy chapter one, verse five. Second Timothy chapter one, verse five, correct. Okay. It says, I am reminded of you since sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your in your grandmother Louise and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you as I dwells. 
in and you so as smells well. Where what's the grandmother's name? Lois, sir. Lois. Lois. <clears throat> kind of like Lois and, Lane, Superman's girlfriend. Yeah, Superman's yeah. girlfriend. <laughs> and your mother, Eunice. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Jesse. Second Timothy chapter three, verse fifteen. Fifteen. And how from and how from the childhood you have been acqu acquainted with the sick the sacred write, writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. There you go. Uh, we saw already in Acts chapter 16 that he was in Derby and Lystra and then Timothy came to Paul's attention. This dated would have been around 51 to 54 AD. Uh, the man the young man, Timothy, was well reported of by the brethren in the area. Acts chapter 16, verse 2. Acts chapter 16, verse 2. Miss Vanessa. Acts chapter 16, verse 2 says, He was well spoken of by the brothers as at Lystra and Iconium. Okay, so we see that not only was he a young man, but he was a young man who had a good reputation. Uh, this is in the second missionary journey. During the first missionary journey, Paul had evangelized the area, and he had visited both of these places. We can see that in Acts chapter 14 and verse 1. Acts chapter 14, verse 1. Oh, Acts chapter 14, verse 1, it says, At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went, as usual, into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. Okay, Acts chapter 14, verse 8, Anna went. And verse 8 says, now at Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. Okay. Acts chapter 14, verse 21. Anna, uh, that Anna just got that. Larissa? Acts chapter 14, verse 21. When they had reached the gospel to the city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. Okay. So is it possible that Timothy heard the gospel from Paul on his first missionary journey? It is possible. We don't know. Uh, in both letters, we learned that Jesus Christ had separated this young man for a special ministry. And there had been prophecies related to him and his special gift. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Wilma. Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Okay, so we see that there were prophecies, right? Uh, the gift, what was the prophecy? He had a gift as an evangelist. Uh, we can see that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, Marvin. You said me? Marvin. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. 
It says, as for you always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Okay. Now, we also understand that he was sealed. This gift was sealed by the laid on of the apostles' hands, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 6. Roll in. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou dear up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on my hands. Okay, so we realize that the Apostle Paul laid hands on Timothy. This is the only reference that we find in the New Testament of the laying, hand, laying on of hands to, dis, to dispense or for the dispensation of a gift. Uh, we'll also see that Timothy's gift is respected by the elders and uh, they Elders identified with him. We will see that in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 14. Fred? And it reads, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Is, Do not neglect your gift, which was given to you through the prophetic message when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Okay. So what we see here is that Timothy was a very special young man. Uh, although he was the child of both a Greek or a heathen and a Jewess, he had not been circumcised according to the Jewish customs. Uh, we find the command for circumcision in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 10. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 10. Ronald Lynn. Again, sir, what verse, sir? Genesis 17, 10, please. 17, 17 15. Mm -hmm. 1710. 1710. Genesis chapter 17, verse 10 says, This is my covenant, which you have you shall keep between me and you, and you, your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. So who's supposed to be circumcised? Every male. Every male. Every male. Take a look at the same thing in Leviticus chapter 12 and verse 3. Leviticus chapter 12 and verse 3. Raynal, you want to look at that for us? Leviticus chapter 12 and verse 3. Leviticus 12.3. Yes, please. Leviticus chapter 12, verse 3 says, On the eighth day, the boy, the boy, the boy is to be circumcised. Circumcised? I circumcise. Okay. So now we understand that this was not done. Paul had this done in order that the fact that he had a Greek or heathen father would not interfere with his ministry. In the ministry was a gospel to the Jews. We can see that in Acts chapter 16 and verse 3. Acts chapter 16 and verse 3. Mary. Hello, Mary. Paul, one, 
Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places for they all knew that his father was a Greek. Okay. Paul. And we can see Paul's attitude related to circumcision maybe explain for us a little better <laughs> in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 20, Giselle. Nine twenty. Second Corinthian. First. First Corinthian. Nine. Nine. Twelve. Twenty. Uh, first Corinthian. Sweetheart. A first Corinthian chapter nine verse twenty says that to the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews to those under the law I became as one under the law though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. So what, do you, what is Paul saying here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 20? 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 20. What is Paul saying? That everybody, everybody? To become a Jew, you have to follow the, the, the rule or the law. So though there I mean there are they not being myself under the law. But it is Paul under the law. No. So why did he do this? Because uh to win the um I guess to win their their faith or their trust. To win their souls for Jesus Christ. Oh, to win their souls. Okay. Uh, it's just like it's just like when you are in a place that you want to win these people, you have to become one of them as well. Yes. Now, we don't take on sinful behavior in order to win souls, but we try to help people to find the gospel of Jesus Christ, correct? Yes. Just like... Mm -hmm. You, you want to be a uh, white Filipino. Is there such a thing? Uh, no. You always say, I'm <laughs> you always say But, you know, that's the opposite of uh, Joseph. He said he's a dark, what's that? He's a dark American. Okay. try to accompany people to help them to yeah. come to the wherever they are that's where you need to meet them okay Paul later on tells us I have become all things to all men thereby I might win some is he, he even the apostle Paul didn't talk about winning everyone for Jesus Christ did he Fred no, no. Correct. but he, I might win some right all right I ran two minutes over and, and I didn't even get any of the material covered. Can I share 